Israel is he seeking Arthur and Moksha as number, I mean, a comma and Arthur. He's seeking Moksha and he runs it through Dharma mm -hmm. to make sure he's correct in terms of his purpose. And what is the purpose? Antakarana Shudi. That is Dharma. That I need to be clear of. Because if I'm not clear about it, then I'm spinning my wheels. I'm idle. You know the idle? Yep. Treadmill. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and because so much is saying about the machine in, <coughs> in, um, in the machine in, what is it called? Is it in, the, in Hawaii, is this? This mm -hmm. machine has got all the stuff. There's something banking yeah. and something turning and all this Planetarium. stuff. And nothing, no product has come out of it. That's called idleness. Okay, so the word we should say in this verse does not mean simply superior. To say that the karma yoga is far better does not mean that the mitya chara mentioned in the previous verse is good. The two are completely different. One person is sitting, dwelling on things, being lazy, and the other person is active and has karma yoga attitude. Because the karma yoga accomplishes everything, he or she is far superior to the other person who is simply a hypocrite. Not merely superior. There is no comparison at all. The karma yoga accomplishes the ultimate purushartha, moksha, but the hypocrite achieves nothing, even in a relative sense. Somebody said, it's the same thing of putting zeros on the left side of a decimal point. It's a life wasted. I Shankaracharya, in, in the in the Vivaka Chiramani, so we commit suicide, so spiritual suicide. Why? Because there's no accomplishment. Even though we accomplish a whole lot from the standpoint of the world, but we, didn't, we, we just spun our wheels. This being so, then, Lord Krishna said, what do you say? We're going to read now verse, um, which verse? Verse 8. Ravi, you want to read that? Yeah, okay. Do action that is to be done because action is superior to inaction. And due to inaction, even the maintenance of your body would not become impossible. The word nitanam refers to karma that is enjoined by the Shastra. By telling Arjun to do those actions that are to be done, Krishna was not suggesting that the Shastra would always tell him what was to be done? There are, of course, many situations that the Shastra does not cover. But because every situation is a part of the given universal order, the situation itself dictates what is to be done. Thus you need not be told that a particular action is to be done at a particular time. Given the situation, what is to be done becomes very obvious. How do you understand this? Shastra does not dictate, you know, the, the situation and, and tell you what to do. It's, it's not. Okay. You have to figure it out, basically. Hmm? You have to figure it out. Okay, that's right. And, and then what do you use as a standard? Dharma. Okay. Yeah, same. Yeah. You just follow dharma and do that. So. And, and then, where does dharma come from? Ishvara. Sure. No. No, no, so how do you know what, what is dharma? What do you know? What is no, that? Universal. The norms of the society. Okay, the society. In the norms of the society, in this case, we live in an area. In the the universal, universal law. law. Universal law. Yeah. Universal laws are like me. Some. Come on. I think the, the basic basic thing we always have for a long time ago is. So it's you know if if I'm going to hit somebody, if it's going to hurt me, then I know it's not right to hit somebody. That's the basis. Mm -hmm. it means you know if I'm going to knife you. That means you should know that if the same thing happens to you, it's going to hurt. So that's a dharmic way of say, looking at it. Okay, meaning in you, in you there is something. There's an order in you. Yeah, right. it's not order. Isn't it? There's an order in you. I should not. I but should not be hurt. hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want it. I should not be hurt. Yes. So, and then we usually 
demand what? That we don't get hurt, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But then, do we always fulfill the same thing for others? No. No. Why? Because even if I don't kill you, I wish I kill you. I give you. I hate you. Which means if I could, I would. <laughs> and I don't do it because I'll put you in jail. But I'll tell you, you know, with this, this. So even with the mind, even with the mind, you don't hurt. By speech, by thought, or by deed, you don't hurt. Now that's Dharmic. Meaning what? Here is an order that I have that you should do and not do unto me. And then the order and the universal order is, therefore I should just close the circle and then also not do it to others. Mm -hmm. You see yes. what I'm talking about? That's a universal law. A universal law. In other words, that's Dharmic. Yes. And that applies not just to individuals, it applies to everything. I want this house to serve me. Okay? Well, the house will serve you, but you have to serve it too. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> You have to maintain it. <laughs> you have to maintain it. Is that right? That's the way it works. Yeah. So he says right here. You see, that, you see, you shouldn't be waiting for the scripture to tell you what what should be done. Yeah. Okay, but there's a general consensus here. It says what? Because every situation is a part of a given universal order. Every situation, the situation itself dictates what is to be done. Now. Mental health, let's look at this. Okay, I'm not very much, uh, I'm not a psychologist, of course, but let me tell you. If, if, if I go for therapy, you know, to a psychology, psychologist, psychological therapy, it is because <clears throat> here's a reality in other words, my family, my children, my job, this is a reality. And my family, my children, my job, there is an order in that relationship. It's a situation, situation of order, isn't it? With my wife, with my children, with my job, isn't it? But then it seems like I'm in conflict constantly with it because I don't follow the order. And I keep on doing that. In other words, I don't take care of my family, <laughs> I don't take care of my children, I don't take care of my wife. So I got a problem, which means what? I'm not aligning with the reality of life, isn't it? With the order of life. So if there's a psychologist that is worth his name or her name, he will help me then so I can actually start aligning to the reality of the order that is out there, isn't it? Not just for the sake of my children and my wife, but also for my own sake, because I'm full of conflict, isn't it? So a healthy Psychological status means someone that somehow aligns himself with the realities of life, the order of life. I mean, to come out of left field <laughs> in something which is completely, I recall this, contrary to the reality, uh, there's some misunderstanding there. There's some misunderstanding here. Okay, if I go to the store with my wife, and here we are in the store with my wife, and then this girl starts winking, you know, to me, you know. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. This woman, there's, there's something screwy. She knows it's my wife. <laughs> and she's actually winking, you know, winking the eye to me. What is this? There's something that's completely out of order, isn't it? So I'm a professional, and here I have a particular knowledge, and aptitude and license to function as a professional, and then you come, and then I don't see you as someone that I can use, I can serve with my profession, but someone that can actually give me what I want, in terms of money, in terms of pleasure, in terms of this, uh, I'm out of order altogether. Yeah. Isn't it? There's something wrong with me. If I go out there and approach someone with those intents, which are not in terms of my profession, and the person somehow does something to me, it's not to say something wrong with the person, it's something wrong with me. I'm just receiving either it's a slap or the lawsuit or whatever. You see, if I'm employed as an employee, there's an order in my job. And the order of the job is a mission of the, of the, of the, of the job of the business. And I, I have to align myself to that. 
and if I and I go to the bathroom and stay longer than I'm supposed to, <laughs> or I, I completely lie and say I'm, I'm sick, or if I go there with a bad attitude to think that this should serve me and all that, hey, I'm out of order. So I'm going to be spit it out by my job, and I'm not going to be there anymore. Or as an employer, it's the same thing, yes. That's, uh, in a way, it is true. It is, in a way, it may not be true. And Basu uh, would really agree with me. Those kind of employees could either be government employees or many, <laughs> many PG&E employees. <laughs> <laughs> you see, well, they have order. Why? Because they're, they're serving the society. And they're actually breaking the order. So the idea is that in every situation there's a universal order that we somehow need to align with. If we don't align with that, if we do not mean it and, and see it as it is, there's something wrong with the thinking. You know, and that thinking is skewed because and because of some feeling. And the feeling is not based on, on a reality, it's based on a subjective reality. Remember that? On a subjective reality. Remember the three realities. Three orders of reality. There's the Lord, which is Brahman, the absolute reality. Isn't it? What is the other one? Your own Ishwara. Ishwara's reality. The universe, the, 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 universe, the, the world's reality, which is the Lord's reality. In other words, this, the laws of gravity and everything else and so on. Empirical reality. And then there's also subjective reality. What I create. Yeah. And my job is to align myself to the empirical reality at least. If I'm an employer, why am I going to take away from you what belongs to you, hoping that you won't find out? You know, I'm asking for trouble. I'm breaking the reality. If I abuse you, as a, you know, sexually or whatever it is, or I harass you, I mean, I'm breaking the reality. In other words, I'm breaking that. The empirical, I'm not in alignment with empirical reality. And this person doesn't want to be harassed. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So. The jails are full, and the hospitals are full, and the and the graveyards are full of people, and most of us, because we actually are out of line with our empirical reality. And we cannot expect spirituality to take place in a mind like that. To be worshippers of the Lord, either by going every Sunday, every Saturday, or whatever day or the week you go to church or temple or mosque or, or satsang, And, and I don't align myself to the, to, to the empirical reality. When I'm there, I praise everything else and do all the things and say the right things and do the right things. But when I live out of there, I'm off, off whack with the reality. It, it's, it's like walking on a treadmill. I ain't going to go nowhere. Why? Because I'm actually working against myself, really speaking. <laughs> You know, you know the cogs on a, on a, on, a, on, a, on machinery. They have these these gears. You go against those gears, they're gonna yes, destroy you. Life will destroy you. Yes. When uh, can I go back to the translation sure, sure. of these words? Uh, yeah. I when I was quickly going to the original Sanskrit one and this one, the last sentence here. I think that word not should be dropped. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And due to inaction, even the maintenance of your body would become impossible and not should be dropped. That's right. So please do that. Yeah, I picked it up when you, he was reading it and I forgot. Yeah. Take that into account because there is a mistake in here. There is a typo. Yeah. The word not is not supposed to be there. I think that not came because in, in this way he said no prasid daya, so he just took that no yeah. twice. So. That's correct. So Actually, even the maintenance of your body would become impossible. Impossible. So not cause the word not. And well, actually, the above true translation yeah. did not include not. Right. See there on the they mm -hmm. did not. It would become so. impossible. So by in these paragraphs, for some reason, they added it. No, the translation included not. Yeah. 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 No, he's yeah. talking about see, the upper, upper, upper here. This says it's now. It's it's the verse. Yeah. The worst translation. Oh, yeah. Uh, it did not include. Yeah, yeah. there it is. So that is a, that's a typo. It's a typo, yeah. So I'm glad you picked it up. I, I picked it up when you were reading it, but then I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah. And I saw it too, yes. Good. Okay, so anyway, so this, this situation of 
article is uh, older, it needs to be uh, you know, recognized. The problem is, here's what the problem is. When things, when the falling, when the world is going against us, yep. when the world is going against us, and they're getting fired, and they're getting respected, and this and that, many times it's because I'm causing it. When, and unknowingly or unknowingly I'm doing it in some way. Now, let's suppose somebody is offending me. Maybe I didn't do anything like that. What okay, is so somebody is offending. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't mean that I caused it. Okay, but of course, but there's, that, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about in terms of, if I'm not fulfilling my, my, my duties in terms of my, the order, the general order of things, I cannot expect to have a life free from persecution. If, if my heart jumps when the telephone rings, or well, knock comes on the door, <laughs> there's only everything there. You know, because uh, I know very well that I'm breaking the order. Dharma, that's what Dharma is about, that mm -hmm. Dharma. So Dharma is not something that is in a book. Dharma is not something that they tell you in the scripture, in the Bible, Quran, or, or, uh, or Hindu scripture. Mm -hmm. Dharma is what is correct in terms of relate, relating with yourself and with the world. Is it is it is it okay to make that uh, that uh, clarification? Mm -hmm. Thus, you need not be told that a particular action is to be done at a particular time. Given the situation, what is to be done becomes very obvious. Given the situation, what is to be done? becomes very obvious. You know, they say that when in Rome, in Rome yeah. do as in Rome. Is that right? In other words, they go on the left side of the street, you go on the right side, you get on the left side of the street. Do as the Romans, they say. Do as the Romans, yeah. Yeah, when you come to the United States, do as in the United States. Oh, no, no, I gotta keep on. Wait a minute. Here <laughs> in the United States, hit the line to that. Yeah. Well, I'd like to be able to do it as well. Yeah, okay, I'll do the same as in India or in Mexico, whatever it is. But I'm going to, in terms of the general society, I'm going to align myself to that. Otherwise, I just go back to Mexico. You know, and, and even there, I break the norm. <laughs> you know, I have to be careful about that. Okay? So anyway, that's the idea. Then it says right here, next. Uh, you want to read now, you know? Yeah. The karma that is obvious in a given situation that which is proper is also near the karma. It is near the either by the order of dharma or because it is enjoined by the shastra. In any case, it is the karma that must be done daily, occasionally, whenever. Krishna told Arjuna to perform action because it is definitely superior to doing nothing. If you do not know the atma and do not do karma either, nothing will be accomplished. Instead, all that will happen is that the body will become sick and the antakarana, the mind, will become even sicker. Thus, doing karma is definitely superior. The word sharida <coughs> in the words refers to the journey of the living body. From birth out onwards, it has been journeying. Even though it reaches certain stages, there are still stations to travel to, like a train that has not yet reached its destination. <coughs> the journey of living, Krishna said here, does not take place if actions are not performed. You simply cannot live your life. Even mere survival is not possible. And by merely surviving, you are accomplishing nothing. This is very, very well established. That something has to be done. Even if you don't know the Atma, you need to, because otherwise there is, what do you call that? Uh, he's talking about getting sick. <coughs> so non-action. Non um, non-action. And um, so n something needs to be done. You know, as a person, should I should be active. Uh, and of course, if if you if you live a life in which <coughs> the activity is for you know to serve oh, others, you know, we talked about it last week. Hey, yeah, but here. 
Yeah. Yeah, if the attitude, you know, the, you know, person, you know, uses his or her limbs and uh, faculties to serve others, you know, which call you know, seva, then the person is actually living life. In other words, it's actually uh, establishing dharma. You know, being is a dharm, is a dharmic condition. Why? Because because that's the thing to be done. So if, if a person is, is life is just a matter of just subsisting. You know, uh, from day to day, uh, without uh, you know serving, doing something to be for the benefit of others, the family, and all that stuff. So growing in terms of then uh, the person is just how you call it spinning the wheels, nothing is happening. So somehow uh, someone was once asked me about a child, he says, you know, so I'm a mother, he said. What can I do? And I said, You have children say, yeah. Why don't you help the classroom? He said, Well I came because I got a little one, you know, I'm not talking about that. Make sure your child gets clean so that the stink of Urine and all that stuff is on the child. Give him good food in the morning. Make sure the guy is clean and, and send him to school so that he will not be a problem to the others. That is serving others. You know, it's an attitude. You see? So wash his face, you know, wave his body, you know, give him good food. Make sure you go take care of the child so that, and you say, but what does that have to do with the classroom? Very much so. You know, if we have a child that is hungry, a child that is cold, a child that is mm -hmm. full of problems, you send him to school, you're creating a havoc in the school. Mm -hmm. Even though you're not there, you're doing it. Oh, yeah. It happens. So, <clears throat> oh, I'm just a mother. What do you mean you're a mother? You're the greatest thing that can be. You know, in your hands there's a possibility of actually making the world better through your children. You know, you don't talk about it, but then you try to raise a child to the point that the child will be someone that will be a benefit to others in the meantime. And, and through your actions, you're actually serving at the concert of society. There's a concert going on, and this is your job. Is he so well? well it's not just, uh, no, there's nobody just nothing. You know, uh, in, the, in a big factory, I went once to the Ford plant many years ago when he was in, in, uh, in uh, Fremont. You know, it was a tour, you know, the whole plan, it was amazing. And in those days, there were no, how do you call this, uh, how do you call these guys, the robots. There was whole people, you know, hundreds, thousands of human beings, you know, producing four cars, you know. And I saw the machinery and all that stuff, and uh, all these very important pieces of machinery. But then I started noticing in a big, huge machinery that was doing something, I don't know, there was, there was this little car, a little bit of a, you know, how do you call this, a uh, shaft like this. Take that thing out, you know, oh. it falls apart. Carter pin. Yeah, carter pin. Carter pin. Carter pin. <coughs> the whole thing has to stop. Yeah. Because the, the, the movement, there's a, like a symphony going on. You know, and those, those, those uh, how do you call this, uh, production lines. You know, in those days especially. I don't know how it is nowadays, but those days especially, but everybody had a job. And everybody was depending on the one behind him in order for things to happen. Every individual, every little item, every piece of metal, everything meant something. So there's not just a color pin. My guy needs a color pin. So it's not just me, a mother. It's not just me, an employee. Hey, where is the girl? You are. When you were born, you were not born to your mother, to your father, only you were born to the entire universe. Whole, uh, the whole symphony of the universe took part in your birth. You are such an important human being in that respect. I'm talking about in an empirical way. Of course, from the standpoint of the self, you are the whole. But from the standpoint of the human being, being born, every animal, every even the fleas have a place in life. And the wow. mosquitoes. <laughs> so don't say I'm just this. Human beings can actually disconnect themselves, you know, out of not thinking. They disconnect themselves of the importance of their being, the being born. Or we then disconnect others, say, you're worthless. You know, we call people worthless, and that's so 
That's a subjective thing you Oh yeah, that's about. right. And, so, and then, uh, then if I buy into it and say, yes, I'm worthless, and then this double mistake. Like, somebody can have their opinion that I'm worthy, so fine, but I know I'm worthy. I don't know yet for what, but I'm worthy. You know, here I am. I'm just a little, how do you call it, a kind of pin in this whole thing. And it doesn't seem like nothing, but I'll tell you what. Somehow, there's a plan for me. I don't know what. If I have that opening in my heart, then I can go about the face of the earth, you know, without say, crunching myself, you know, feeling worse and worthless. That's a big mistake to think that. Because then, that, that foolish humility, you know, foolish, foolish humility, it's, just a, it's a mistake. What's wrong with you saying, I have this ability? What's wrong with saying, you know, you know I, I am someone of value? I am someone of value. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, no, no, you're very proud. Tell you what, God doesn't make mistakes. And I'm not a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make a no mistake. Anyway, so that's the uh, idea. You have something to share. You were thinking about something when I was talking. Sorry. No, I have missed that side. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so that's an important point. So as long as you hear the teacher, he's actually making Arjuna recognize that it's better to do something. Yeah. Don't just sit there. You know, live a life of Seva. Seva is aligning oneself to the world. Seva means service. Yeah. And everyone does it according to their possibilities. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Lord, lead me from what appears to be true to what is true. Lead me, O Lord, from confusion into clarity. Lord, lead me from a sense of limitation to discover my limitlessness. Lord, that is whole, this is whole. From that whole, this whole became manifest. And if from that whole we were to take away this whole, what would remain would again be only the whole. Lord, let there be peace. Peace. Om Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mrityoma Amritam Gamaya Om Purnamada Pur